damn. I think I was really putting my hopes on this being the chance. So a week or two ago, I found myself stuck in a bit of a photographic rut. Although I'd been taking a lot of photos recently, I hadn't really got one that I was properly pleased with for quite some time. I decided the answer was a purely photographic adventure to a truly wild place, the home of my grandparents, which just so happens to be in the New Forest, a brilliant wildlife haven in the south of England. They'd recently moved back there from Spain to live, and naturally, this meant a visit from their favourite grandson. Hello. Hello, let you in. I had three days to explore the new forest and escape my photographic rut. So sit back and enjoy what will surely be a treasure trove of photographic successes and uncharacteristically some quite frankly groundbreaking tips. I tell you what, it's been a while oh, since I've been out in the proper countryside in a proper winter climate. <laughs> oh, really need gloves. It's frost on the ground and everything. I got used to being in a city too much. It's too warm there. That's done for the new forest ponies. Oh no, I am brambled. I'll probably repeat this at some point in the next couple of days, but are oh, you it? Right, on to what hopefully is the quiet spot where I can cover myself in camo, set up and just sit it out. And hopefully we'll see some cool wildlife. Oh no, let's get going. It turns out most places in the new forest were much busier than I first thought. Luckily, towards the end of my first day, I got a tip about a location that may be a bit quieter, though I was still in high spirits and reveling in being outside and taking photos once again. So muddy. <laughs> Those of you who've experienced it already will know what I mean when you start to get a craving for it. It's been a couple of months since I've been able to do it, I have to say. But I'm really now at that stage. I'm just desperate to just... Oh get that almost form of therapy. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm sounding crazy or this is making complete sense. I feel like I could have chosen a more intelligent path. Sadly, I was a little late in the day to make the most of the quieter location. Ideally, I'd want to have been there a couple of hours before sunset so that the area was completely undisturbed as the good light appeared. And to be honest, I'd like to have been much better hidden. Unfortunately, it was a little rushed. Realising I wasn't going to get what I wanted that evening, I packed up and headed home a little early. So that's it. End of day one in the new forest. Um, I haven't really seen anything. I haven't really photographed anything. And I felt a lot of frustration because of how busy it was. Taking away positives, saw a tree creeper and have a spot that I will use in future. So... Not all bad, but kind of disappointing. Oh, I did get a few, excuse me, please. Trying to, trying to end the video. Now you take your time. Two tree creepers today. Nowhere near close enough to show you that, but. Huh. Fingers crossed to see something or get some photos tomorrow with Megan, Megan McCubbin. If I haven't said already, as I realize I might not have is the lady that will be joining us on this vlog tomorrow. Uh, she knows the area really well, she's a really talented photographer and wildlife presenter. So, it should be a lot of fun. But for today anyway... Well, that's your lot. I'm running a tiny bit late, but I should still be on time. <laughs> so day two would involve meeting a friend who has lived in the area for most of their life 
and so in theory would know these words like the back of their hand. But theory is an interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never actually spoken to Megan in person before, such is the way of the digital world we live in, I guess. Side note, I actually live with two people I met on Instagram. Meeting up with friends for the first time from Instagram is often a little surreal, but it's never long before I find myself exchanging wildlife or photographic based anecdotes. Obviously, I don't recommend doing it on your own in the dark in a remote car park. You know that feeling when you uh, arrange to meet someone that you haven't met before online and you pull up in a car park and there's a car right next to you, but it's pitch black and you don't want to get out and say hi in case it's not the person you're waiting for. Yep, that's my position right now. As soon as it was light enough for us to see where we were going, we set off. Though the intermittent heavy rain meant there were only some brief opportunities to get out the vlogging setup. But before we dive into the day's exploring, I have a quick message. This video is made possible by today's sponsor, London Camera Exchange. They have 29 branches across England with expert staff and brilliant customer service. So whatever interest you might have in cameras, binoculars, telescopes, all their associated accessories, London Camera Exchange holds a huge variety of new and used equipment and may just have the bargain you're looking for. Now back to the video. Right, so we've been walking for, how long have we been walking for? About an hour? We've now seen our first deer, but they are not filmable because they are like, uh, right down there. And uh, they're just gone. <laughs> Initially we did think they were stumps. They weren't. Yeah, they started moving, so... That's the clue, people. I mean, if you, if you come here for anything, it's to learn things like this. Uh, if it moves, it's not a stump. Top tip of the day. Top tip of the day, mm. right? And we're just getting started. I Imagine know. what the rest of the day's oh, got to hold. You're in for a treat, eh? <laughs> Seen so far a tawny and a couple of deer. Which is, oh, and a few tree creepers. Yeah, tree creepers. And an unident unidentified bird, which is really annoying. You know, when you hear that call. Yeah, get the apps out. Get the apps out. Get the apps out. <sighs> Birds out, apps out. <laughs> <laughs> that is the hashtag. That's the, that's the nerd version of that saying. <laughs> okay, we got lost quite substantially. Nah, this this feels right. It's got to be. Hasn't it? Maybe. Maybe. Sort of. Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> but in a place like this, how can you blame us? There's distractions for nature nerds around every corner. So cool. From curiously delicate looking mosses to fallen giants generating life in miniature, it's no wonder we missed the turning or two. Okay, maybe three or four, but you get my point. They're awesome, aren't they? Amazing, just all the different kind of patterns and textures. There's something about this feeling when you you get out and get tired and wet and uncomfortable that's almost therapeutic. How would you describe it? It gives you a calming feel. Is that a path? Uh, I think I see a path. Potentially. It's my... Confirmed path, yet though. Oh, it's true. It's, it's a... No, that's path. confirmed. That's a path if ever... I'll tell you what, I've never seen such a good path. <laughs> As I was saying, we're in really good spirits uh, because we're having that feeling now. Like, we're soaked. We've been walking quite a long way. Um, but the air's fresh. It's, yeah, it's, it's weird. If you haven't experienced it, next time it's chucking it down, get out, bring your camera and like a bin bag to wrap the camera in, a little tippler. You ever done that? Wrap your camera in a bin oh, bag? Please. There we go, see? I've got about three in my bag, I think. Top tip. <laughs> bin bags do the world good. They actually do. Never uh, came without one. There is no excuse not to do wildlife photography or just get out and enjoy wildlife when the weather's bad. In fact, there's more reason to do it. And rain can have some great effects too. Oh, the emotion. Oh, oh. so good. You know it, you know it. <laughs> I was right there. Oh. Now getting it's to the bar <laughs> is another, another issue, a bit of a moat. Oh. Hmm. I reckon this top tip, this, you watch this go wrong. You watch this go incredibly wrong. Top tip, ugh. when it's really wet, these clumps of grass provide stepping stones. Whoop, boom. Hello. Um, there nice. we go, see? Done. Stepping stones. Right, That looks way? familiar, which I'm worried about. However, we did eventually find our way back and in doing so stumbled upon something that I in particular was very chuffed with. Um, you got to do it now, no, you've done it. Well, we found the road, so I was doing a little victory dance. You know? Amazing, amazing. Celebrate. It's pretty exciting. Birds out, apps out. Uh, apps out. Apps Megan's out. Got, got the app to double check. I was going to bring a book, but it's quite heavy. Yep. And you were going to is it definitely? <gasps> Just first well, marsh tip. So we've actually, I got the camera out to try and get a shot of the marsh tits for you. To show you what it looked like, show you what we were seeing. And found that they kept coming back to this gate, just here. 
just there. And so I've actually taken a seat along with Megan and we think that someone's been baiting it slightly because there seems very strategically placed logs <laughs> on the fence. Potentially a bit of seed. <laughs> a little bit of seed in there. Um, they keep coming back, which, you know, it'd be rude of us not to take full advantage of that. Um, so apologies if you're the photographer that's set that up. Drop a comment below. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's literally what I was going to say. Thank you, because I've now got photos of my first encounter with a, a master. While we are, and while we're, we're waiting to see if anything pops out, I thought I'd talk to Megan about or give Megan a chance to speak about something that I think is brilliant and one of the reasons I was really excited to collaborate uh, something called Wildlife Rebellion so for those of you for those of for those people watching <laughs> uh, who don't know what that is would you like to explain a little bit about what it is? Sure so um, we created Wildlife Rebellion well fairly recently but we announced it on Christmas Day so it's, uh, it feels like yesterday really um, and basically it is an entry-level kind of activism organisation uh, that hopes to kind of get more people out on the streets kind of campaigning for nature but our focus rather than just focusing on climate change which has been the primary focus at the moment we'd like to talk more about biodiversity loss and habitat destruction so that will be our focus and we'll be doing kind of rebellious cheeky actions things that are you know, on the edge of being a little bit naughty, but they will all be legal and authorised. So whenever you come out and you join one of our events, you're at no risk of being arrested. Um, and yeah, so it should be really good, kind of family friendly, a lot of fun. I think, yeah, it's something that a lot of us would empathise or have the same, a similar feeling in terms of the fact that you, as an individual, sometimes feel powerless. So uh, a way, a place to, to put that that uh, need to help is, is something that I think is going to be very powerful. I will certainly be joining on a lot of these events, so come along and I'll see you there. I'm sure there'll be lots of people uh, joining me. Where do people go then if they want to take part? So head to our Wildlife Rebellion website um, and on that website you'll find a volunteer form. Um, if you could fill that out and send that back to us, it will give us details about where your skills are and how you might want to help, whether you want to be a steward, or whether you want to be like an advocate or help us create content or anything. All those people and all those skill sets are so valuable to us and so important. So if you can kind of fill one of those in, we'll add you to our database and then when the time comes and uh, we need extra hands, which we absolutely will very, very <laughs> soon, so please do help us, um, then we can kind of call on you to kind of get involved and help more be great awesome all good news so until that day uh we're just going to carry on waiting in the woodland for something to photograph i think i might try a bit of macro never yeah. know fancy giving it a go absolutely give it a go let's yeah. do it and i'll see you at the events see you there oh no oh is it a wet foot you made it though you made, made it, it. <laughs> On the final morning, it started to dawn on me that the photos I was so convinced I would come away from this trip with were yet to materialise. So I decided to head to a deer sanctuary which feeds deer once a day. Unfortunately, when the deer are being fed, it doesn't really make for great photos. However, the result of the regular feeding means that the surrounding woodlands are usually full of deer. So my hopes were high as I silently but optimistically set off into the waking woods. So I've just caught a glimpse of my first deer. There was two or three fallow deer walking through the trees. So although this is classed as a deer sanctuary, they are wild deer. So they're just as timid, really. Oh, there's a fox miles away. Proper countryside fox. Sadly, it was a bit late for Foxy. He was in that field behind me. Ooh. <coughs> 
Sadly, after exploring for a good few hours, I only had one fleeting encounter with a fallow deer, and it wasn't the top draw image I was really after. And to be honest, months of this was really starting to get to me. As you can probably tell by the lack of footage and photos, I didn't find anything. I've been here three days. It's one of my favourite spots in the UK for wildlife. And wildlife has been everywhere. I just haven't got any photos. Don't get me wrong. I still loved being out. And <laughs> like being caught in the rain and it's an amazing feeling, but it's like, it's now at a point where results matter. And I'm not getting any. If you are still watching, thank you. Um, sorry I didn't come away with anything. It's probably the longest period I've gone without having a photo that I'm happy with since getting into photography. Like I say, it's probably four or five months. Damn. I think I was really putting my hopes on this being the chance to change that three days in the new forest. I think coming away without that. Maybe it was just having expectations, which you should never have for something as unpredictable as wildlife, I don't know. I guess like anything in life, you want efforts to be rewarded. Maybe that's it. But then again, it's probably also due to the fact I'm now feeling the pressure of trying to make this a career. Don't know if you, uh, dear people, have ever experienced the same thing. Let me know if you've got a tip for getting over it. Because photography is full of ups and downs. I'm sure this would just be one of those downs, one of those points. And I know I won't stop taking photos, so law of large numbers says that I will take one that I'm happy with at some point. <laughs> but in the moment, yeah, feeling a little lost. Packing up, literally stood by the car, head on the roof of the car, feeling sorry for myself. And I heard a call I recognised, something that I heard once or twice before, um, and was very distinctive because I remember the first time I saw one. And I sat up, I was like, That's, that really sounds like one. And it was right next to me, so I was like, okay. So I tried to take a shot, and it didn't look bothered with me being there at all. I followed it. It was a tree creep. One of my favourite woodland birds. Probably some of the best shots I've ever got of a tree creeper and some footage that I'm really happy with. Okay, it's not the the killer shot that I'm after so far. I haven't I haven't actually checked. Um, but what an experience! Just when wildlife is getting you down, it's not it's not giving you what you really want. It will give you just a little taster to keep you going. And this is by far one of the best, no, the best experiences with tree creepers I've ever had. Yeah, there's something something about these little things. So thank you, dear people, for sticking with me through this one. Um, yeah, highs and lows. Um, still didn't quite deliver on the photography front uh, this trip, but seeing a tawny owl, seeing my first marsh dip, and spending time with a group of tree creepers like this is, that makes it worth it for me. It really does. So thank you, and hopefully I'll see you again next time.